Hi guys, it's Michelle, and today's video is going to be yet another conspiracy theories video regarding Stranger Things. Y'all know I love Stranger Things. I've been doing conspiracy theories videos on the show since it's begun. They're some of my favorite to do because I think this show is so great, it's so interesting. Volume 2 is amazing. This video is going to contain spoilers for Volume 2, just so you know. Yeah, let's get into them. Alright, so the number one theory that I've been seeing recently is who Eleven's father is. This is obviously something we're going to discover in Season 5. Hopefully. I feel like if we don't, I'll be kind of annoyed because like obviously this is a big question mark because we obviously know Eleven's mother is Terry Ives. So we want to know who Eleven's father is and honestly TikTok has some theories. So most people I've seen believe that number one or Vecna or fucking Henry, whatever you want to call him, is Eleven's father. And I think that this is low-key true. It really makes sense if you think about it, even though like I feel like the actor who plays Vecna looks super young. Um, according to the timeline, it would be definitely possible he'd be like in his 20s by the time Eleven was born, so it's totally a possibility. Not only that, but I think the reason most people believe this is because obviously he's number one, and obviously Dr. Brenner really liked to experiment. I think it's an interesting concept to consider that perhaps Dr. Brenner was questioning like what would happen if one who was like at that point the most powerful of the bunch of people that he was experimenting on had a child and i think this is an interesting theory and i think it's definitely possible it would be a really great twist i wouldn't be like that surprised i guess by it but i think it'd be super interesting nonetheless if you guys have another theory of to who you think eleven's father is i'd be really interested in hearing i mean i guess there's also a possibility that like dr brenner is her actual father obviously she calls him papa but i feel like that would just be boring um, I do think that Vecna being her father makes a lot of sense because obviously Eleven has a lot of qualities that Vecna has and she's the only person who hopefully can defeat Vecna. Um, and I just feel like it kind of makes sense for them to be related of some sort, so. I don't know, but what do you guys think? Alright, the next theory I want to talk about regards time travel and why the Upside Down is stuck in 1983. Okay, so the Duffer Brothers said that we're going to find out in Season 5 and it's going to be kind of like a big plot as to why the Upside Down is stuck on the day that Will disappeared. It's going to be a huge plot line in Season 5 and I want to know your guys' thoughts on why the Upside Down is stuck in 1983. The Upside Down, like things that happen in the Upside Down don't actually happen in the reality of Hawkins. I know that's like kind of hard to explain and hard to understand because if you think about it, they technically died in the past. So it's like, honestly, I don't know how they're going to explain this one. It's kind of confusing. Another theory I saw is that because Eleven's powers were so intense that she was actually able to freeze time in the Upside Down, like not on purpose, but when she opened the portal, because her powers were just so intense, it froze time. I think that's kind of a possibility, but it's just weird how the creatures can exist in the past and the present, and I'm really interested to see how they explain this in the future. I also heard the theory that the Upside Down was completely created from memory, which is why it is stuck in 1983. When Vecna was creating it, it really wasn't like he didn't have that much knowledge of Hawkins because he was so young when he was sent to the lab. Um, but perhaps Will created some of these places, um, and that's why they were stuck in 1983. I don't know, but I think this is going to be, like, very interesting to see what this is. A lot of people also believe that this is, like, a door opening for the concept of time travel in the series, and I think that's kind of an interesting concept. I kind of hope they don't go that direction, but I could definitely see that direction being played out because at the end of season three, the movie that they're watching is Back to the Future, so I feel like everything is so pre-planned with the Duffer Brothers that I could definitely see that as a possibility. What if Stranger Things ends by like the only way to like destroy Vecna is for Eleven to kind of go back in time and erase the entire series essentially. Like it's like that whole they go back, she goes back in time and she's like a kid again like about to like banish one into the Upside Down. Like that would be crazy. That would be annoying. I don't want that to be the end. But it is an interesting concept because I don't know what else Eleven will be able to do to stop Vecna, which is a whole nother thing that I want to talk about, is that I think Eleven is going to have to die in order to end the series. I have been saying this since the beginning of the series. I've always felt like Eleven has to die. Whether or not she actually created the Upside Down is up for interpretation, but I think that in order to officially close the gate, 
she might have to exist in the Upside Down. I don't know. I just don't think it's gonna like work out in the way that everyone wants it to and everyone wants like Eleven to live. I've always felt like she's gonna have to like sacrifice herself to save all of her friends. The concept of time travel is really interesting because what if Eleven is able to like time travel? There's probably so much of Eleven's power that hasn't been like touched on yet. For example, she basically saved Max's life at the end of volume two. She like, was that ever like a concept we were aware of that she could fucking bring people back to life because I feel like that's a new thing. Um, so who knows all of the powers that she has not tapped into yet. So I'm really interested to see where that goes. I have to say again, I do think that it'll end with Love and Dying. It could kind of end how like season one ended where it was more up for interpretation whether or not Eleven was alive or not. And perhaps that could like, you know, further on to a spinoff series of some sort. So I think that that might be the direction they go in, but I'd like to hear your theories. And I would really like to hear your theories on why you think the Upside Down is stuck in 1983. Cause I cannot think of anything else besides what I've, we've talked about. I don't know, but I also don't feel like anything that we talked about is like gonna be the reason. So I would like to hear your personal theories. I wanna talk about Eddie because I have a theory that I feel like a lot of people want to have is that Eddie's not dead. Obviously we kind of like saw him die, so it was like different than Hopper and Will, so that kind of sucks. But the thing is, apparently the Duffer Brothers have said that Eddie will be back in season 5, and apparently the Duffer Brothers have also said that Demobats cannot kill anybody. Maybe there was a way where Eleven was able to save him, because they skip to two days ahead without showing anyone's reaction to Eddie's death besides Dustin, obviously. And I just thought that was really weird because normally like they wouldn't do that, I think. And the reason I think they did that, perhaps Eddie is not actually dead and maybe the gang just thought it would be best for Eddie to fake his death in this like earthquake that, you know, they were saying happened for now until Vecna was killed because obviously Eddie was like at the top of everybody's hunt list because Everyone thought that the Hellfire Club were the people who were killing the people that Vecna were killing. Which obviously wasn't true, but we saw the way that fucking... I don't even know that rat's name. What's Chrissy's ex-boyfriend's name? Jason. His name would be Jason. Obviously we saw the way that Jason and his friends reacted and kind of fucked up a lot of the shit that happened. Oh my god, he was so annoying. Nonetheless, I think that it's an interesting concept that perhaps Dustin was able to help him save him whatever the case may be. Maybe Eleven was in there helping as well. I'm sure about the logistics. I'm sure they would be able to come up with something that is somewhat logical. I mean, obviously this is a TV show, so whatever, but I think it's interesting because obviously it would have been best for Eddie to fake his death. Until Vecna is gone, people are still going to continue thinking that Eddie is the one killing these people, so I just think it's for the best. I think this is an interesting concept and I think it kind of fits into the idea of why perhaps um, we don't see anybody like Steve and Robin and Nancy like reacting to Eddie's death. Alright, the last theories we're going to talk about have to do with Max. I don't think Max is dead. I don't know if I'm just like trying to be positive vibes, but I really don't, especially with Max. I think Eddie more likely um, is actually dead than Max. Uh, obviously Max is like in a coma, but I don't think that that's going to like continue in season five. Um, well, actually, I kind of think season five is going to pick up where it left off. Like, I'm hoping the time jump is kind of in the middle or the end of because they stuff brother said that there's going to be a time jump. So I'm hoping it's at the end. I want to see the battle of this is like feels like the battle of Hogwarts. So you know what I mean? Like, this is like the end all battle. I think that Max is going to be fine. Um, I don't know how she's going to be fine. I've seen a lot of theories on TikTok say that the reason that like Eleven couldn't find her in the void was because her soul was taken by Vecna and the only way to get Max back will be to kill Vecna. Um, which is an interesting concept, but I feel like that's kind of a little boring played out. I think she's just gonna end up being okay. The reason why is because I started re-watching all of Stranger Things before Volume 2 came out, like literally from the beginning. And at the end of season three, right before Hopper dies, like literally like the scene before, Joyce and Hopper talk about going on a date on Friday night at Enzo's and then Hopper died. In volume two, the same thing happened between Max and Lucas. They talked about going on a date on Friday night. I mean, I guess yes, Friday night is like the classic date night, but I feel like they did it for a reason. And I'm surprised I haven't seen anybody point this out. I'm sure people probably have, but um, they talk about going to a movie on Friday night and Hopefully that means that 
Max will end up being okay, as just like Hopper was. I've also seen the theory that Vecna is within Max now because he didn't like complete the death. He's still in her mind. Um, and instead of like Vecna having Max's soul, it's almost like Max Max's body will be a vessel for Vecna. Kind of in the same way that it was for Will and probably more similarly like it was for Billy which is scary because obviously like they didn't end up finding a way to like expel Vecna or the Mind Flayer, whatever you want to call him, from Billy. So that makes me a little nervous. I don't want Max to die, but I do think that it's a possibility, but I still think that like she'll be in season five regardless of, like I don't think that she'll be just like in a comatose state. I think that she'll come back and be like kind of like a really afflicted by Vecna, like how Will was with the Mind Flayer. Like, you, she's there, but she's not there, and they're gonna have to find a way to get Vecna out and kill Vecna. I'm very interested to see where this goes, but I think the big bad of, like, Stranger Things in general is Vecna. Like, I don't think that there's, like, a higher monster above that. Um, at least I don't think there's going to be. I think, even though it was, like, coming out, it was, like, kind of, like, him and Jonathan, like, had a really sweet moment. I really liked that. I want him to confess his feelings for Mike, even though, obviously, Mike probably just, like, is unrequited because he loves Elle. I think it's sweet and the painting scene literally made me sob. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I'd like to see you guys' thoughts on that. All on this Stranger Things, I am obsessed with this show. I one of my favorite shows of all time. Definitely one of my favorite Netflix show of all time. It's so good. Um, but yeah, I'm actually really sad that it's gonna end. <laughs> season five. I hope there's like a good spinoff. There's just so many directions they could go with it. But that is it for today's video. If you guys liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about these theories and any theories that you have regarding Stranger Things. I would love to hear them. But that is it. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram because I'm always posting really dope ass shit on there. Subscribe for new videos every week and I will see you guys later. Bye!